Hey everybody, this is L.O.D. Wise. Today we're going to be talking about Rick and Morty Episode 3. And I have to say, this is definitely a kind of a bigger episode. Really kind of shows more of the dynamic uh, between Rick and Beth. Because you find out in this episode, of course, that they're going to be going to that therapy thing or whatever else. And that's the reason why Rick turns himself into a pickle. Just so he doesn't actually have to do it. But then you really kind of see this throughout the entire episode. He actually kind of changes. He actually changes his emotions. And he still has his main front he's putting up that everybody's actually seeing in the episode. But if you kind of look at where his he's not showing... You can actually see he's kind of becoming more of a deeper character. He's actually, at this point, trying to uh, do what's right and go and actually help, even though he has infinite amount of daughters. Okay, we can't go too far into this episode without actually uh, talking about the uh, sewer scene. You know, when he's killing all the rats and actually taking parts of their bodies off and actually becoming you know, more or less like a super pickle Rick. You know, it, it was kind of reminding me of some kind of like a freaking you know, RoboCop Bruce Lee, uh, freaking Jackie Chan mix. So my question is, can he actually go ahead and do that? Because you've seen him jumping around whatever else. Can he actually do that in his normal body? Or is this more or less kind of like a brains over bronze sort of, you know, kind of argument kind of thing where he thought of about it so he can go ahead and go do it. So I'm very curious. That'd be really cool to be able to see Rick actually jumping around like a freaking, you know, acrobat murdering everybody with a Robocop suit. But when you got into that sewer, man, you know it was dark. It was it was kind of a pretty fucking messed up thing. And I was kind of watching this little future a featurette thing. They like the you know, the developers here were actually talking about it, kind of trying to make the rats meaner looking, so it's not so cuddly looking rats. Yeah. Well, I have to say they actually did a very awesome job. I mean, the artistry on that was just amazing. I really liked how they actually were able to do the uh, fight sequences, and actually it looks really freaking cool. Actually, this this episode has to be one of the better episodes they came out with. It really. You're able to get the action, you're able to see all the cool new adventures and whatever, but you also had massive character development in this storyline. They actually were more or less kind of looking at themselves. Because this actually kind of look at that, because the whole thing is uh, Rick has finally figured out, okay, it's kind of a two-sided thing. You can kind of look at this two different directions. Beth took the syringe that was going to turn him back into a human, okay? They, she did that, and so that's one thing you can kind of say the reason why he's gone through all of this fighting and everything else is just to get that syringe. But I think, honestly, there's something else here because when he gets there, he actually starts looking at himself and kind of looking. You can see it's happening in his little, you know, pickle head of his. But there is um, a massive connection between them two, even though he did finally say that he actually abandoned him. He actually used that word, abandoned his daughter in the Cronenberg world. So he's looking at what he's been doing. He's also looking basically into himself and trying to make this reality his actual home reality. On that whole reality idea, you know that, okay, he came from his reality, went to the Cronenberg reality. At that point, he gone ahead and fucked everything up. He left everybody for dead. He went now to this new reality. Cause, so now we are basically at least, what, two, three realities from his real reality? It's kind of a weird convoluted almost. But that's kind of what I really think he's already fucked up so many times. He already has feelings for his kids anyways. Even though his original kid has died with a massive explosion, even I think this new reality he's in, he is trying to actually keep it and actually go ahead and make a connection with these people. I don't think, honestly, he's just here in this one just because whatever, because you know throughout this entire show, he would have said, you know, screw you, Morty, millions of times, and everybody. He would would not have stuck around. So I think, honestly, he, the only real reason why he had left the Cronenberg one, because I don't think he could fix it. Maybe he just didn't figure out how he could. So that's why he just said, screw this, move to the next one. And I think this one right here, this is the reality he's trying to make correct. Make it like it was in the very original reality he came from, C-130, I guess. I know, I kind of stay in this kind of topic here, I know a lot of people are saying the you know, eye patch Morty is C-130 Rick's original Morty, but he can't have an original Morty. He doesn't have a Morty, period. Because in his reality, his daughter died, okay? So at that point, she could have had Morty. So when he jumped to the other reality, I mean, it honestly would have to be before the Cronenberg reality to be able to have those memories, basically, of seeing Morty as a baby. And because in that reality, of course, he was gone for, for a long time as well. So he may have gone ahead and went back and went to a different reality to have the, this Morty we have now. 
So, we kind of just figured this whole thing out. I patch Morty cannot be his original Morty because he didn't have original Morty because his daughter's dead from his C-130 reality. So, uh, I'm very curious where the I patch Morty's going to be coming into because uh, I was reading a whole bunch of other stuff and watching some other little bitty uh, snip bits from the uh, developers they're talking about. You know, they're definitely going to be bringing him in and trying to see where he came from and whatever else. So, I'm very curious to see where that's going to go. This is definitely one of the better episodes I've seen in the past. It's really kind of uh, two of the bigger things. And we got to you know, character development and then we got some more action and fighting and whatever else so well guys we're gonna leave it here this was kind of a long uh, long little review but uh, if you guys like this hit those like button hit those subscribe button leave those comments and theories i definitely read them and i'll catch you guys next time